Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I am absolutely honored and very privileged to uh, actually meet and talk to Mr. Honda, who is the chief engineer for Mitsubishi, specifically the Outlander. He's been with Mitsubishi for over 30 years, had been in charge of Outlander for 15 years, and I've spoken to him quite extensively before when the Outlander was first introduced. And here we are at the uh, kind of mid facelift cycle. The Outlander has changed a lot. So I'm back here talking to Mr. Honda, or Honda-san we call him, and he's gonna walk through and tell us what's going on with Outlander and tell us all the changes that are happening for 2025. Let's go. Welcome back everyone. So I am with uh, Honda-san, chief engineer for Outlander. This is an amazing car with a lot of changes for 2025. He's gonna tell us exactly what changed, but those are very important changes for the Outlander. So let me just quickly do a quick intro and we'll speak kind of mixture of Japanese and English. And, and of course, we'll explain everything. Okay, so I'm gonna ask him to first show us what's changed for the exterior of Outlander. We'll hop into in interior after that. Okay, let me start from the front surface. You know, uh, we already uh, changed the food shape from the uh, opening line, changed from downside to upper side. And also we changed the grill surface, like a clean and a smooth image, and to get the uh, uh, fit and finish better. And also, uh, actually, the material of fender panel has been changed from plastic to uh, steel. So uh, fit and finish is also improved. And finally, we changed the shape of lower uh, bumper area to have a robust and a powerful images. All right, so I'm going to add some additional comments because I have been talking to him about these changes. So it's really important to note that it used to be aluminum, it's now steel. And you might think that's kind of strange because it's almost reverse of the current trend. And the reason why is that aluminum, of course, is lighter, which is good for weight reduction, but they tend to vibrate a lot. And that's one of the most common you know, things that people talk about when they're driving new cars with aluminum hood, they vibrate a lot on the highway speed. So he wanted to make sure that we have a solid steel so we don't have that phenomena. Yeah. And then same thing on the side, this was a composite plastic, it's now steel for same reason, provides the rigidity and provides the security of a steel panel, which cannot be replicated with aluminum. And also the other thing he mentioned is the openings. So it used to be that this grill opened with the hood, but now it's separated from the hood obviously for ease of operation, it just looks better. Mm -hmm. So lots of quality changes over here. Fit and finish has improved, which I talked about in my other video, which I did a full review on. Honda-san, can you show us anything on the side uh, yeah. that changed uh, also? Second is the side. Uh, you can easily understand the aluminum foil shape is uh, changed like a robust image. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, some areas uh, like uh, uh, this uh, roof area, has been uh, color changed from the, uh, the black to silver areas. I see, okay. So some uh, aesthetic changes, but also Honda san, did you guys change the tire? Ah, it used to be Falcon yes. tire. Yes, thank you, and thank you, David san. Toyo Open Country uh, HD tire. Maybe, do you know why we changed that tire? Yes, uh, because to improve the ride comfort mm -hmm. and the shock and the harshness, we changed the tire first. Then based on tire change, we, uh, we calibrate the suspension also. So the suspension has gone through quite a bit of changes, right? Correct. And I noticed when I was driving this car extensively today, the ride is smoother, more refined, it's quieter. I mean, it's almost like a different car. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's very unusual to see such a dramatic difference based on what we call the uh, facelift change. This is way more than facelift. So what was the actual change in the suspension itself? Yes, uh, actually we changed the spring ratio, uh, hardness and the thick, uh, diameter. Diameter, And okay. also damping material, yes, hardness. Okay. Yes, uh, And yes. the uh, valves are changed. I see, so a lot of things have changed in suspension, which again, doesn't always happen with a facelift model. So Mitsubishi has gone through extra step to make sure that the ride is improved. Is it also quieter inside as a result? Ah, yes, yeah. that is a good point. So we add some sound insulation materials to the door area or quarter panel. Then the room noise has been reduced very much. Right. And I think some of the sound deadening was added because yes. you wanted to also improve the, the stereo system, which is all new, yeah. the Yamaha system, which we'll talk about in a second. Yes. And because the door is acting as a speaker box. Correct. And also the whole body acting as speaker mm -hmm. box. So there's lots of a dampening 
uh, structural rigidity added to the doors. And again, these are things that you would normally wouldn't see in a facelift. And so I did notice even closing the door, I think it feels different. Like it's a solid thump. I feel like that's also part of the reason from my perspective. And I mentioned to Honda-san that when I measured the paint thickness, they were between 160 to 170 microns, mm -hmm. which is quite a bit thicker than average Japanese cars. They're usually 100 to 120 microns. So almost as thick and in some cases thicker than even Lexus paint. So mm -hmm. I was uh, pointing out how good the paint is. Good, this is a new paint, isn't it? Yes. Moonstone uh, gray. We call this is a moonstone gray metallic, mm -hmm. which is a, a very blue shiny in the uh, sunshine area, mm -hmm. but a, a monotone gray mm -hmm. in the uh, cloudy area. I see. Is the process for this paint also different from before? Is it a different uh, kind of process? The uh, process is the same. Mm -hmm. Just uh, we uh, changed the uh, color material itself. Is there more flakes or metallic paint in this paint? or? Uh, I think a uh, uh, metallic will be reduced. Okay. But the uh, uh, original gray color uh, material has been increased. Okay, so to bring a little bit more, more of a gray color out. Yes. The current trend is actually not to have so much metallic these yes. days in paint mm -hmm. because right. it looks kind of fakey and looks cheap. And so many car companies are reducing the metal flakes and giving mm -hmm. maybe more of a vibrant color. So I think that's what you guys did. I really like this color a lot. Um, anything else in the back? I think the tail yes. lamp also changed a yes. little bit. Uh, we changed the uh, uh, cover, cover color from mm. the clear to the smoke. Smoke so color. So you okay. can see the one piece of uh, black material. Mm, mm. Uh, and also uh, lower garnish shape has, has changed. been changed to have a robust image. I see. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting because usually smoke tail lamp is reserved for high end cars like a Porsche. If you buy a Porsche Cayenne or Macan, you can actually order to have a tint in the tail lamp, but you don't have that option in mainstream cars. But it looks cooler with the darker color. Has the shape any, no change with the shape or anything? Uh, shape itself is, itself is the same, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, uh, turning lamp mm -hmm. is changed from the bulb yellow type to LED yellow type. Oh, I see, I see, okay, okay. Does the new change also help in the case of a small accident? Is it easier to repair? Does that change at all? Uh, that is a one-piece shape, so uh, repairability is the same as... It's the same as before, but it looks yeah. better. Yes. looks better. Yes. Okay, let's hop inside and Honda-san will continue to show us a little bit more about the changes for 2025 Outlander. Okay, so we are now inside the new 2025 Outlander and this has received a lot of changes as well and I'm going to ask Honda-san to explain briefly what they are but from my perspective driving this vehicle all day um, gave me really um, honest impression in terms of what's improved and I noticed this whole thing is much easier to use because they revised this, this console here and this screen went from 9 inches to 12.3 inches so that's a big change uh, but there's a whole bunch of other changes Honda-san can you tell us some of the other changes that have been yeah. taking uh, place? As David said, uh, first biggest difference is the screen size. We enlarge the screen size from 9 inch to 12.3 inches and some contents are added. Mm -hmm. And also uh, can you can see the uh, console design is changed to the kind of clean image. And uh, we changed the uh, uh, cup holder location to easy access mm -hmm. and also the uh, tray for the wireless uh, charger has been improved. So it's easier to uh, yeah. put on and yes. take it off because it's Correct. not as deep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, center console is also a little bit bigger. Bigger. Than is that right? Yes. Uh, and then just overall, it looks good. Like um, I always said the Mitsubishi had a beautiful interior, but if you compare this to other you know, automakers mm -hmm. with the same price range, which can include Mm. RAV4 or Highlander or CRV or Honda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe Passport along that line. Like this is, you know, a grade above those vehicles with a soft touch materials. This is also soft mm -hmm. and uh, it looks gorgeous. Um, you, I guess other companies, Honda Stand, they often use hard plastic, mm -hmm. but you Do guys use soft plastic. Yeah, yeah. It's more expensive this way, right? Yes. But you Actually, guys kept yes. that mm -hmm. and the only hard plastic I see is just a little bit here mm -hmm. but even this is nicely textured mm -hmm. and even here is nicely textured these details are like I think incredible for a car in this price range which is a very affordable car and you have a bit of a like a textured uh, carbon fiber matte finish mm -hmm. look here as well and the stitching on the door mm -hmm. stitching on the you know seat, seat itself yeah. mm -hmm. and these have changed a little bit right, right. 
Did you guys also change the shape of the seats or anything like uh, that? Or basic shape is the same. Just same? we changed the uh, sewing patterns and okay. also quilting pattern. Okay. And uh, now we have a ventilation type seat yes. for the summer. Uh, oh, hot okay, summer. okay. That's why we so have like some a cooling seats. Correct. Okay. So, okay. so you can see the, some holes. Oh, I see. To you guys, air. And you didn't have that before? No. Oh, this, this is, is first new. Time. Yes. I see. Okay, but the biggest change, not just these small improvements, but the biggest change is the fact that you went from Bose now to a Yamaha system, which yes. we can see some of the tweeters in here and mm -hmm. also door. And I was just listening to the presentation uh, from you and also from the uh, engineer from Yamaha mm -hmm. that um, now it's more lively, feels yes. like the artist is in front of you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Yamaha system? Yeah, uh, we have two kinds of Yamaha system, which is the uh, Ultimate and the Premium. And the Ultimate is a uh, high end. Which is what we have here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this vehicle has a 12 speaker and two types of uh, amplifiers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it makes a uh, real live sound and uh, you can hear the uh, artist breathing. I see, I see. Yeah. So because it's so clear, is that right? Yes. And I did listen to it quite extensively yesterday and today, and it's a very natural, balanced mm -hmm. feel. And like you said, I can hear the, the, the clarity, you know, I can hear all the little mm -hmm. details as well. And, but it's a big change from Bose to mm -hmm. Yamaha. Other competitors have like Lexus has um, Mark Levinson yeah, yeah, yeah. and many other different models. Mm -hmm. Do you think you guys have the best stereo system now? Yeah, I think so because, you know, Yamaha produces many music instruments. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. know the real instrument sound very well. Right, so right. my sound master tunes a uh, car as an instrument. Right, right, I see. And, and that's all because of the long history of Yamaha in yeah. music. And I understand this is the very first time that Yamaha has an audio system in a car outside Japan. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you have to kind of listen to the uh, new audio system to believe it, but to have this level of audio capability and sound in a car that's only costing between kind of the thirty to forty thousand dollar range Canadian, it's just incredible because normally you get this kind of sound only in a very expensive mm. luxury brand. Mm -hmm. Um, the final change that I wanted to ask you is about the driving. Mm -hmm. So when I drove today, I was uh, actually quite surprised at how much mm -hmm. uh, changes it has gone through. Mm -hmm. Because now the steering, which is still electric power steering or EPS, has a lot more feel. When I turn, I can kind of feel the resistance, mm -hmm. kind of like an old hydraulic steering, yeah. uh, kind of mimicking that feel. And it's also felt more stable. It seems to track straight. What were the changes you guys made to make it feel so much better. Thank you. So, uh, especially about the uh, steering effort, we changed uh, both uh, suspensions and also electric power steering calibration. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, because of to reduce the friction, we can have a clear uh, center of uh, wheels mm -hmm. and okay. also linear effort. linear effort. That is our point. So when you um, turn the steering away from the center, you can feel more, right? Yes. So you know where the center is. And we call that on-center feel, and it's often lacking in many cars. And that's my number one complaint about cars in general these mm -hmm. days, because the trend is that car companies are making steering lighter and lighter, yeah. and you, you can't really feel anything. And maybe it doesn't matter so much for average person, mm -hmm. but for me who loves cars and mm -hmm. who loves to drive, the steering feel is like the most important thing. So the combination of a steering feel, the brake feel is solid. The engine hasn't changed though, right? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but the engine is very capable, still very comfortable. It's naturally aspirated mm -hmm. engine. Um, I know the vehicle shares some platform with Nissan Rogue. Correct. But this one is built in Japan, mm -hmm. engineered by you and your team in Japan. Yes. So it has mostly Mitsubishi engineered uh, design. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. With yes. uh, not only the platform and basic architecture is shared with Nissan? Yes, uh, we share the platform and the power train, mm. but the uh, uh, interior or exterior and also the calibration of steering or four-way drive technology is tuned by Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi. Motors. And your four-wheel drive, which is the uh, super all-wheel mm. control, yeah. it's very unique also, isn't it? Correct. And tell me, why is it unique from other uh, You know, the SAWC is controlled by three type of function. Mm. One is a four-way drive, and mm. also we have a, a, a 
break AYC, which mm. controls the uh, uh, left hand side and right hand side hole. And also, uh, we have a combination of ABS and ASC for braking. Right. So you can actually can adjust the torque from left to right, Correct. front to back, Correct. and then you also use ABS to control the braking mm -hmm. uh, all four wheels, Correct. so that when you turn or brake, mm -hmm. it's adjusting everything using computerized method to mm -hmm. keep the car stable. Is that right? Yes. Correct. Yeah. And I think, you know, based on my drive today, and just in general, I can tell you that Mitsubishi is all-wheel drive system is uh, a step or two above others and the reason why is that most car companies in this price range offer front-wheel drive biased vehicle which mm. basically drives in front-wheel mm -hmm. version and then when the rear wheels begin to slip they transfer the torque to the back mm -hmm. and it, it becomes kind of all-wheel drive mm -hmm. but that's kind of cheating in my perspective it does give you a little bit better fuel economy yes. but when you step on the gas and you turn the front wheel slip mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't happen with this car because mm -hmm. i think the torque control front and back left and right is much better okay. and therefore the car feels more stable to me is that is that yeah. would you obviously you yeah, obviously you. agree you, but that's true. <laughs> yeah. so i think overall i'm really excited about the new outlander because it's way more than just a refresh mm -hmm. and facelift i think it's almost like a new model in some way. Yes, it does look the same outside and inside, but I feel like it deserves uh, much more appreciation than just saying this facelifted model. I would say this is quite a major change. And thanks to you, Honda-san, you made it all possible. Everything comes together, very integrated. It's Japanese engineered, propelled in Japan at your own factory in Japan in Okazaki mm -hmm. place. Is that right, your factory yes. still? Uh, and I look forward to going there as well at some point. Yeah, it's so, this place. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yeah. Um, Thank I, you. We are welcome to come visit uh, Okazaki plant. Yes. Super, super. Thank you so much. Thank That's you so much. exciting for you and your team. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you very All much. Right.